Hello! You know when you're rooting through the storage spaces looking for something and then you stumble across some old tech you've not seen for a while or forgot you basically even had it and then because of this new find you forget what you're looking for and then start to play with the new thing? Well that's just happened to me. I found this leftover remnant of the before smart TV gizmo era. It's an MXQ OTT TV box. This funky little device was used to access things like Netflix, Plex and other wonderful internet based related stuff on the living room TV. That's right, this comes from before the whole invention of the smart TV. This particular one was released into the wild way back in 2016, a whole eight years ago, or in today's money, nearly a decade. And the next question is, does it still work? Is it obsolete? And what use is it? So let's find out. Two hours later. Okay, well, that took an absolute edge to power on. The remote is a little hit and miss, and connecting it to a live Ethernet cable didn't work. Let's try the Wi Fi. Well, the Wi Fi was a Kelly Brook. So let's just see what the actual specs are. We have Android 4.4.2 and that's KitKat. So let's have a look under the bonnet and see what's actually inside it. This particular variant is an AM Logic S805Q. It has an ARM7 Revision 1 CPU which is quad core and I believe it's a Context A5. The GPU is a Mali 450. The RAM that's actually in this particular variation is 512 meg. Um, some of them have a gig and some of them even have more depending on which revision you get. The storage capacity is eight gigabytes, which is a NAND flash eMMC, um, but there's only five gigs free for us to actually install apps and other bits and pieces onto it. We do have, well, we believe we have Wi-Fi and Ethernet. The ports are there and so is the actual Wi-Fi antenna. Um, but for some reason, in this particular version of Android, it doesn't work. Uh, there is no real-time clock, no RTC, there's no battery for it, but the system does rely on utilizing the internet time sync up, which occasionally does work. So, what do we do from here? Let's try install Lollipop. Well, Lollipop's not stable, so let's put KitKat back on. Well, that's full circle and back to as we were before we even started. So to answer the second question, is this obsolete? Um, yes. I've tested the link for the updater and that goes absolutely nowhere. It no longer exists. Um, I've tried connecting it to the Play Store using Ethernet, uh, different angles so it does actually engage and it will not do anything with the Play Store at all. 
and I've even tried firmware updates, forcing on Lollipop and that gives more issues with stability amongst other things. So, moving on to question three. What use is it? Well... It's no secret I love me some retro gaming and in keeping with that we're going to make this TV box useful and entertaining again. Useful and entertaining like it's 1991. To do this, we're going to need an SD card, a controller, preferably USB, and a pokey prodder. Next, we'll download and install Etcher. There are other available softwares like Rufus, but I like this. We now have almost everything we need. And no, the last part is not going to be Libra Elec. That'll take too long to configure and get working and we've already wasted enough time on this already. Tis not Batasira nor Recal Box. Sadly, they don't support the S805 chipset any longer. So we're going to use Lacquer. Or Lacquer, as this guy says it. Sadly, these duds, I mean dudes, are no longer in existence, but then that would make it far too easy for us. We like challenge, it's not we're late to this party at all. Anywho, getting back on track, we're going to download Lacquer. Thanks Matt. But we will have to grab an archived version for our MX box, and we can get it from this amazing resource. Quality archiving, my dude. And the image file we want is this one. Lacquer S805HD18Q ARM 2.31.img.gz. You thought Matt was going to say that, didn't you? It's not a Peter K garlic bread thing. Anyway, now we've cleared that all up. We are now set to press on and complete this incredible journey. So let's go full Shia LaBeouf. Just do it! Okay, let's go. First, let's add lacquer to the SD card. Fire up Etcher. I find it more reliable running this as the administrator. The SD card, slot it in there. If you don't have an SD card slot on your device, you can get one cheap enough from various online and high street retailers. Select the image file, that's in our downloads folder, select the destination, our SD card, and finally... Yes. Ah. Sorry, couldn't resist that. After a little time passes, boom, we're ready for the next step. We're going to move over to the TV box. The SD card, slot it in there, input the HDMI cable, and drop the pokey prodder into the AV socket. The AV socket has a little micro switch inside. You should hear this kind of click when you put a little pressure on the pokey prodder. So now we need to hold the pokey prodder down, insert the power cable, keep these pressed in until you see the lacquer bootloader appear. And relax. We're now ready for a quick and filthy config. Let's plug in the controller and wait for the auto detection. Moving over to the lacquer settings, selecting Wi-Fi, and let's see if we can connect to it. And it does. Awesome. Networking is alive. So let's jump into the services settings, where we can enable some very useful remote access settings. In this case, we'll enable all three options. SSH, so if we need to run any command line, we can do. Samba, so we can access the actual shares from our Windows device. And Bluetooth, well, why not, right? And finally, dark mode, just because we can. So now we're all configured, let's reboot and move back to the PC. We're now into the home straight. We're gonna connect to the TV box from here. We can do that through the run command as we enabled Samba. We enter the two backslashes followed by lacquer and click OK. We now see the contents of the TV box in the new window 
and the one we want is the ROMs folder and then the downloads folder. Initially this is empty but that's about to change. We'll create a new folder and name this Mega Drive. You may refer to it as Genesis. Let's add the streetsofrage.zip file into this folder, simply drag and drop and that's our first ROM added to the TV box. Obviously I can't tell you where to get the ROMs from for I am no Captain Jack Sparrow so never visited the lair of Vim, nor have I mowed the Black Pearl off the Paradise Island for emus. But I'm sure you'll know how to use an internet search engine. What I have done in this case is back up some of my personal games, and I'm going to utilise them for this occasion. So, let's check that the ROM we previously moved over to our TV box works. Back at the TV box, we're going to select the Import Content option, and then we're going to scan the directory. This has now read the game ROM, added it to our game library, complete with a pretty icon for the Sega Mega Drive, and also named the file to match that of the lacquer database. So let's give this a test. Initially, we need to associate the ROM to a core, and we're going to use Genesis Plus. It may be worth noting that some ROMs may work better with a different core. And there we go. Nice. Well, that's the concept tested. Let's add some more ROMs and see what happens. I've copied over all of the ROMs I've made and already scanned the folders exactly the same as we did earlier. And here is a small test of the games I've added. So there we have it, our obsolete TV box is now a useful little game console for the retro era. To check on full compatibility of the consoles Lacquer can perform, I'll leave a link in the description below, along with all the links I've used to make this little TV box happen. If you made it this far, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or anything to add, please leave them in the comments below. And on that blue screen of death, I'll see you in the next one.